What's up guys, how's it going? We're headed out to the garage here and I said that I was gonna do a video of the harness bar install. So we're ready to do that. Um, before I got started on this, before I get started on this, I went ahead and turning on some lights in here. Um, I went ahead and got the bar lined up. So what you can see, I started the other side first. It's really not that difficult to do one person. Um, so basically what I did is I got this side lined up and up to where I want it. And then I used a bungee cord, believe it or not, which has quite a bit of give to hold it while I moved the other one, the other side. So over here on the other side, I moved it up as far as I could by hand, which got me to about here. And then, you know, it's, it's meant to go up the same time, both sides together. So you really got to put a lot of pressure on if you're going to do one side and then the other. So what I did is I got a ratchet strap up over the top of the roll bar, through the little hoop, and have been tightening it to pull it up into place. It doesn't have too much further to go, however my um, ratchet strap is uh, spooled up, so to say. It's, it's full of the, the strap. So let me get a tripod. I'm gonna get some more slack here in this uh, ratchet strap. We'll get it up into place and then we'll bolt it in and you guys can see how it fits with the seats. So let me get the tripod, I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully that's a pretty decent angle for everybody here. So we're just gonna get some slack in our ratchet system. Okay, and I'm just trying to eyeball it here to see when it's going to be level, which I'll actually get my level. Um, that looks pretty darn close to level to me. So yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. All right. So the next part of this, I'm just, I'm gonna leave the ratchet strap and the bungee there. The next part of this is just getting the actual mounting done. Which will all take place right here. Try to get you as close as I can. Okay. So what they give you is another half circle that just goes around the bar and meets right up. And then it has Allen uh, yeah, Allen bolts, use an Allen wrench for it. It's quarter inch Allen wrench. So at this point you just line everything up and I'm just gonna get a couple started here. Move to the other side here so I can see a little better. Should have brought that Allen wrench with me. I'll go grab. Now, some people would suggest 
Loctite, something like that. I'm not going to, I'm just going to go with it. Okay, that one started. That one started. And I can't stress how important it is to use that thread chaser, also known as the tap, because if you don't, you will have a more or less horrific time trying to get these bolts in. All right, so I'm just gonna work my way around, try to get them as even as possible, which I know sometimes isn't always easy. So you get the idea, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up off camera because there's no point in wasting time just showing tightening bolts. And it's kind of lame. So we're just gonna keep going here. All right, so everything's finished, getting it tightened up. I am hit the side here with the Allen wrench a little bit. As you can see, I was rotating and I think it'll be okay. I'm not overly concerned about that. If I was, I'll just put a, a quick dab of um, paint bed liner material on that. Um, so, you know, that was a screw up that I had. Uh, other than that, the other side's done as well. So what we're gonna do is take this ratchet strap off. And, you know, the whole, the whole thing about what I do is the fact that I do two-man jobs myself a lot of the times is always adapting and overcoming. So, you know, it's one thing I learned, um, you know, when I worked EMS, which you guys maybe didn't know that, but um, I've been an EMT since 2005 and used to work EMS and volunteer on an ambulance as well. And the big thing was just adapting to your environment and overcoming the challenge with what you have available to you. So that's what I did. And that's a lot of what I do. It's just adapt and overcome. So we'll look at the other side here where I got the bungee. That is the rock hard 4x4 harness bar for a YJ. And what I'm gonna show here, I was really concerned about what to do with the roll bar padding. And I think what I figured out how I'm going to do what I wanna do is zipper down as far as I can go. which would be about there. Okay, make sure that's all tucked up. And then down here, I'm gonna do Velcro to hold it closed on the bottom. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So I think that will work pretty well because I still wanna have my roll bar padding. I mean, I like the looks of roll bar padding. I don't, if I had a completely finished roll bar, meaning painted, bed lined or whatever, then maybe a different story. But since my <laughs> roll bar scratched and nicked and all that jazz, I wanna keep it covered so it lasts as long as possible. And uh, again, same thing on the other side. Just zip it down as far as it will go. and then get Velcro to do the rest. As I get everything situated. 
sometimes this is hard to do if your Jeep's not sitting out in sunlight because when it's warm, the, the fabric stretches a little better. But we'll make do. What I have here is cut to fit Velcro. So I'm gonna unroll a little bit of it. And get like a rough estimate of how much I need. I'll just cut it here. sunny out there all right back to this I think right around down here at the bottom towards the bottom anyway would be the best place Okay, maybe I'll do another piece up a little higher. Yeah, I probably should. Cause that looks kinda, <laughs> I don't know. Looks kinda redneckish from the back. Another look from the back. Okay, so that's not too bad, actually. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, the roll bar padding is what it is, but again, I, I like the roll bar padding, so I'm gonna keep it. Do some Velcro on the other side. deal oh it looks like a spot I gotta fix right there dang it so I do have to do some touch-up work okay everybody very simple install bolt on but great quality very heavy duty I think it's gonna serve us well once we get harnesses which will be the next thing we uh, need to get some four-point harnesses I'm not gonna do a five-point <clears throat> they mentioned the submarine strap which would be your fifth point down between your legs uh, um i'm not too interested in that i don't i don't know i don't really feel the need for it to be completely honest with you um there you can see how the seats fit goes right back against and then as you can see we'll have our harness here and it'll go right through there to our front and um, look at the other side. Also a great fit. So, um, there you have it. Rock hard four by four harness bar. Done. Uh, next up on the list, front drive shaft. And 
possibly a new rear drive shaft. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, but definitely a front drive shaft because I blew the U-joint <clears throat> on the transfer case side of the front drive shaft. I don't know how, but I did. And uh, I'll show you that quick. There's the guitar Mageddon ZL1G put still. All right, so this is the transfer case end of the front drive shaft. If you see this end, still pretty shiny. Tells you there was uh, some amount of needle bearings in there. And this side is surface rust, which means there really weren't any needle bearings in there and it was getting water in. And um, so it's failed. <laughs> to say the least. All right, that's it for today. I'm starting to ramble on about nothing. We'll catch you out the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.